In this video, we explore how we can use screencast technology to provide feedback to students' written work. Elizabeth, thank you for sharing your paper. Growing up in some homes is almost intolerable in response to the essential question, what constitutes abuse? I think you did an effective job for the reader when you pointed out right away that uh, in this section right here, that abuse occurs in a number of ways and not just the ones that you normally see in the newspaper. It can also be neglect, it can also be verbal abuse, and so on. Um, you then moved on, and I think this also helps your reader to make sense of what you're writing by uh, referring to a specific example of your second cousin, Kim, and how even though he wasn't the subject of physical abuse, the verbal abuse negatively affects his life and the fact that he has some uh, neglect that things that he needed were not taken care of. Uh, in this section right here, you pointed out that mom only uses money to buy clothes for herself and things for herself and that she doesn't pay a lot of things attention to him and his own health and his needs for asthma medications and so forth. Um, then you move on and point out the, the very difficult position that people are often in when it comes to abuse and this is something that I think a lot of readers can relate to. They've seen things that are difficult, that are awkward, that you don't really feel that you have power to change. And I think that readers will relate to the comments that you've made about being in an awkward position and not having a lot of power or authority to make a difference. Um, a small nuance that might be dealt with in editing in a subsequent revision would be here you mentioned that your mom tried to tell Gabrielle what to do for Kim. Uh, when when your cousin gets angry, and I'm not really clear who Gabrielle is. I think it must be Kim's mom, but I'm not sure. So in your revision, be sure to point out who Gabrielle is. And if it's uh, Gabrielle who's actually getting angry right here in this section. Uh, then we go on, and another small editing nuance might be that even though people in your area probably know what CPS stands for, other readers might not know because different states and different counties use different terms for this kind of, of uh, social support. So you might want to spell out what CPS stands for before you use the acronym. And the same thing here where you use the word, uh, or the abbreviation for doctor. Even though we all know what that means, it's probably better just to spell it out D-O-C-T-O-R and uh, move forward from there. Uh, I like that you included specific examples of things that uh, Kim's mother says to him because specific examples add, add depth and make the reader feel like they're understanding exactly what is happening and why it's not appropriate, why it's intolerable as you pointed out. Um, one of the other effective approaches that you took here was that you pointed out how, how things are with Kim when he is at his mom's house but also how different it could have been, how different it was, and how different it could be when he has appropriate care, when he's not verbally abused, and when his needs are taken care of by pointing out how life was for him when he was at your home. Uh, <clears throat> finally, down here, one of the things I'm getting to now is I'm thinking that readers might like to know that Kim is not just one uh, example that that is not like most other people so I wondered here if a way forward might be that you could provide statistics to show that verbal abuse and neglect happen all the time that they're uh, unconscionably uh, prevalent in our society and maybe what could be done based on some research that you've done on the internet or on our uh, online journal database here at the school and then finally I think that you made a really good point here at the very end to just bring everything down to a, a successful conclusion that your mom provides you a model of support and tolerance as you've written here and that you hope to continue to be that kind of a person when you become a parent. Uh, overall, I like your paper. I hope that my suggestions will help you to make some successful revisions and if you need help be sure to stop by my desk or email me if you uh, need additional clarifications or assistance.